Hello, today we get to go back to reading Ezekiel, starting with chapter 40. In the 25th year of our exile, at the beginning of the year, on the 10th day of the month, in the 14th year after the city was struck down, on that very day, the hand of the Lord was upon me, and he brought me to the city. In visions of God, he brought me to the land of Israel and set me down on a very high mountain on which was a structure like a city to the south. When he brought me there, behold, there was a man whose appearance was like bronze with a linen cord and a measuring reed in his hand. And he was standing in the gateway. And the man said to me, son of man, look with your eyes and hear with your ears and set your heart upon all that I shall show you. For you were brought here in order that I might show it to you. Declare all that you see to the house of Israel. And behold, there was a wall all around the outside of the temple area and the length of the measuring reed in the man's hand was six long cubits, each being a cubit and a handbreadth in length. So he measured the thickness of the wall, one reed, and the height, one reed. Then he went into the gateway facing east, going up its steps and measured the threshold of the gate, one reed deep. And the side rooms, one reed long and one reed broad, and the space between the side rooms, five cubits, and the threshold of the gate by the vestibule of the gate at the inner end, one reed. Then he measured the vestibule of the gate on the inside, one reed. Then he measured the vestibule of the gateway, eight cubits, and its jams, two cubits, and the vestibule of the gate was at the inner end. And there were three side rooms on either side of the east gate, the three were of the same side and the jams on either side of, were, were of the same size. Then he measured the width of the opening of the gateway, 10 cubits, and the length of the gateway, 13 cubits. There was a barrier before the side rooms, one cubit on either side, and the side rooms were six cubits on either side. Then he measured the gate from the ceiling of the one side room to the ceiling of the other, a breadth of 25 cubits. The openings faced each other. He measured also the vestibule, 60 cubits, and around the vestibule of the gateway was the court. From the front of the gate at the entrance to the gate, to the front of the inner vestibule of the gate was 50 cubits, and the gateway had windows all around, narrowing inwards toward the side rooms and toward their jams. And likewise, the vestibule had windows all around inside and on the jams were palm trees. Then he brought me into the outer court and behold, there were chambers and a pavement all around the court. 30 chambers faced the pavement and the pavement ran along the side of the gates corresponding to the length of the gates. This was the lower pavement. Then he measured the distance from the inner front of the lower gate to the outer front of the inner court a hundred cubits on the east side and on the north side. As for the gate that faced toward the north, belonging to the outer court, he measured its length and its breadth, its side rooms, three on either side, and its jams and its vestibule were of the same size as those of the first gate. Its length was 50 cubits, its breadth 25 cubits, and its windows, its vestibules, and its palm trees were of the same size as those of the gate that faced toward the east. And by seven steps, people would go up to it and find its vestibule before them. And opposite the gate on the north, as on the east, was a gate to the inner court. And he measured from gate to gate a hundred cubits. And he led me toward the south. And behold, there was a gate on the south. And he measured its jams and its vestibule. They had the same size as the others. Both it and its vestibule had windows all around like the windows of the others. Its length was 50 cubits and its breadth 25 cubits. And there were seven steps leading up to it. And its vestibule was before them and it had palm trees on its jams, one on either side. And there was a gate on the south of the inner court and he measured from gate to gate toward the south, a hundred cubits. Then he brought me to the inner court through the south gate and he measured the south gate. It was the same size as the others. Its side rooms, its jams, its vestibules were of the same size as the others and both it and its vestibule had windows all around. 
Its length was 50 cubits and its breadth 25 cubits. And there were vestibules all around, 25 cubits long and five cubits broad. Its vestibule faced the outer court and palm trees were on its jams and its stairway had eight steps. Then he brought me to the inner court on the east side and he measured the gate. It was the same size as the others. Its rooms, its jams, its vestibule were of the same size as the others and both it and its vestibule had windows all around. Its length was 50 cubits and its breadth 25 cubits. Its vestibule faced the outer court and it had palm trees on its jams on either side and its stairway had eight steps. Then he brought me to the north gate and he measured it. It had the same size as the others. Its side rooms, its jams, its vestibule were of the same size as the others and it had windows all around. Its length was 50 cubits, its breadth 25 cubits. Its vestibule faced the outer court and it had palm trees on its jams on either side of it and its stairway had eight steps. There was a chamber with its door in the vestibule of the gate where the burnt offering was to be washed. And in the vestibule of the gate were two tables on either side on which the burnt offering and the sin offering and the guilt offering were to be slaughtered. And off to the side on the outside as it goes up to the entrance of the north gate were two tables. And off to the other side of the vestibule of the gate were two tables. Four tables were on either side of the gate eight tables on which to slaughter. And there were four tables of hewn stone for the burnt offering, a cubit and a half long and a cubit and a half broad, the one cubit high on which the instruments were to be laid with which the burnt offerings and the sacrifices were slaughtered and hooks a, brand, a, <laughs> a hand breadth long were fastened all around within. And on the tables, the flesh of the offering was to be laid. On the outside of the inner gateway, there were two chambers in the inner court, one at the side of the north gate facing south, the other at the side of the south gate facing north. And he said to me, this chamber that faces south is for the priests who have charge of the temple. And the chamber that faces north is for the priests who have charge of the altar. These are the sons of Zadok, who alone among the sons of Levi may come near to the Lord to minister to him. And he measured the court a hundred cubits long and a hundred cubits broad, a square, and the altar was in front of the temple. Then he brought me to the vestibule of the temple and measured the jams of the vestibule, five cubits on either side. And the breadth of the gate was 14 cubits and the sidewalks of the gate were three cubits on either side. The length of the vestibule was 20 cubits and the breadth 12 cubits and the people would go up to it by 10 steps and there were pillars beside the jams on either side. Chapter 41. Then he brought me to the nave and measured the jams on each side. Six cubits was the breadth of the jams and the breadth of the entrance was 10 cubits and the side walls of the entrance were five cubits on either side and he measured the length of the nave 40 cubits and its breadth 20 cubits. Then he went into the inner room and measured the jams of the entrance two cubits and the entrance six cubits and the side walls on either side of the entrance seven cubits and he measured the length of the room 20 cubits and its breadth 20 cubits across the nave and he said to me this is the most holy place. Then he measured the wall of the temple six cubits thick and the breadth of the side chambers four cubits all around the temple. And the side chambers were in three stories over one over another, 30 in each story. There were offsets all around the wall of the temple to serve as supports for the side chambers so that they should not be supported by the wall of the temple. And it became broader as it wound upward to the side chambers because the temple was enclosed upward all around the temple. Thus, the temple had a broad area upward. And so one went up from the lowest story to the top story through the middle story. I also saw that the temple had a raised platform all around. The foundations of the side chambers measured a full reed of six cubits long. The thickness of the outer wall of the side chambers was five cubits. The free space between the side chambers of the temple and the other chambers was a breadth of 20 cubits all around the temple on every side. 
and the doors of the side chambers opened on the free space, one door toward the north and another door toward the south. And the breadth of the free space was five cubits all around. The building that was facing the separate yard on the west side was 70 cubits broad, and the wall of the building was five cubits thick all around, and its length 20 cubits. Then he measured the temple, 100 cubits long, and the yard and the building with its walls, 100 cubits long. Also the breadth of the east front of the temple and the yard, 100 cubits. Then he measured the length of the building facing the yard that was at the back and its galleries on either side, 100 cubits. The inside of the nave and the vestibules of the court, the thresholds and the narrow windows and the galleries all around, the three of them opposite the threshold were paneled with wood all around from the floor up to the windows. Now the windows were covered to the space above the door, even to the inner room and on the outside and on all the walls all around, inside and outside, was a measured pattern. It was carved of cherubim and palm trees, a palm tree between cherub and cherub. Every cherub had two faces, a human face toward the palm tree on the one side and the face of a young lion toward the palm tree on the other side. They were carved on the whole temple all around, from the floor to above the door, cherubim and palm trees were carved, similarly the wall of the nave. The doorposts of the nave were squared, and in front of the holy place was something resembling an altar of wood, three cubits high, two cubits long, and two cubits broad. Its corners, its base, and its walls were of wood. He said to me, this is the table that is before the Lord. The nave and the holy place had each a double door, the double doors had two leaves apiece, two swinging leaves for each door, and on the doors of the nave were carved cherubim and palm trees, such as were carved on the walls. And there was a canopy of wood in front of the vestibule outside, and there were narrow windows and palm trees on either side, on the side walls of the vestibule, the side chambers of the temple, and the canopies. Chapter 42 then he led me out into the outer court toward the north, and he brought me to the chambers that were opposite the separate yard and opposite the building on the north. The length of the building whose door faced north was 100 cubits, and the breadth 50 cubits. Facing the 20 cubits that belonged to the inner court and facing the pavement that belonged to the outer court was gallery against gallery in three stories. And before the chambers was a passage inward, 10 cubits wide and 100 cubits long, and their doors were on the north. Now the upper chambers were narrower, for the galleries took more away from them than from the lower and middle chambers of the building, for they were in three stories, and they had no pillars like the pillars of the courts. Thus the upper chambers were set back from the ground more than the lower and middle ones. And there was a wall outside parallel to the chambers toward the outer court opposite the chambers 50 cubits long. For the chambers on the outer court were 50 cubits long, while those opposite the nave were 100 cubits long. Below these chambers was an entrance on the east side as one enters them from the outer court. In the thickness of the wall of the court on the south, also opposite the yard and opposite the building, there were chambers with a passage in front of them. They were similar to the chambers of the north of the same length and breadth with the same exits and arrangements and doors as were the entrances of the chambers of the south. There was an entrance at the beginning of the passage, the passage before the corresponding wall on the east as one enters them. Then he said to me, the north chambers and the south chambers opposite the yard are the holy chambers where the priests who approach the Lord shall eat the most holy offerings. There they shall put the most holy offerings, the grain offerings, the sin offerings, and the guilt offering, for the place is holy. When the priests enter the holy place, they shall not go out of it into the, inner, into the outer court without laying there the garments in which they minister, for these are holy. 
they shall put on other garments before they go near to that which is for the people. Now when he had finished measuring the interior of the temple area, he led me out by the gate that faced east and measured the temple area all around. He measured the east side with the measuring reed, 500 cubits by the measuring reed all around. He measured the north side, 500 cubits by the measuring reed all around. He measured the south side, 500 cubits by the measuring reed. Then he turned to the west side and measured 500 cubits by the measuring reed. He measured it on the four sides. It had a wall around it 500 cubits long and 500 cubits broad to make a separation between the holy and the common. Chapter 43. Then he led me to the gate, the gate facing east, and behold, the glory of the Lord of Israel was coming from the east. And the sound of his coming was like the sound of many waters. And the earth shone with his glory. And the vision I saw was just like the vision that I had seen when he came to destroy the city. And just like the vision that I had seen by the Chabar Canal. And I fell on my face. As the glory of the Lord entered the temple by the gate facing east, the Spirit lifted me up and brought me into the inner court. And behold, the glory of the Lord filled the temple. Wow. While the man was standing beside me, I heard one speaking to me out of the temple. And he said to me, Son of man, this is the place of my throne and the place of, my soles, of the soles of my feet where I will dwell in the midst of the people of Israel forever. And the house of Israel shall no more defile my holy name, neither they nor their kings by their whoring and by the dead bodies of their kings at their high places, by setting their threshold by my threshold and their doorpost beside my doorpost, with only a wall between me and them. They have defiled my holy name by their abominations, that they have committed, so I have consumed them in my anger. Now let them put away their whoring and the dead bodies of their kings far from me, and I will dwell in their midst forever. As for you, son of man, describe to the house of Israel the temple, that they may be ashamed of their iniquities, and they shall measure the plan. And if they are ashamed of all that they have done, make known to them the design of the temple, its arrangement, its exits, and its entrances, that is, its whole design, and make known to them as well all its statutes and its whole design and all its laws and write it down in their sight, so they may observe all its laws and all its statutes and carry them out. This is the law of the temple. The whole territory on the top of the mountain all around shall be most holy. Behold, this is the law of the temple. These are the measurements of the altar by cubits, the cubit being a cubit and a handbreadth. Its base shall be one cubit high and one cubit broad with a rim of one span around its edge. And this shall be the height of the altar from the base on the ground to the lower ledge two cubits with a breadth of one cubit and from one the smaller ledge to the larger ledge, four cubits with a hand breadth of one cubit and the altar hearth, four cubits and from the altar hearth projecting upward, four horns. The altar hearth shall be square, 12 cubits long by 12 cubits broad. The length also shall be square, 14 cubits long by 14 broad with a rim around it half a cubit broad and its base one cubit all around the steps of the altar shall face east and he said to me son of man thus says the lord god these are the ordinance for the altar on the day when it's erected for offering burnt offerings upon it and for throwing blood against it you shall give to the levitical priests of the family of zadok who draw near to me to minister to me declares the lord god a bull from the herd for a sin offering. And you shall take some of its blood and put it on the four horns of the altar and on the four corners of the ledge and upon the rim all around. Thus you shall purify the altar and make atonement for it. You shall also take the bull of the sin offering and it shall be burned in the appointed place belonging to the temple outside the sacred area. And on the second day, you shall offer a male goat without blemish for a sin offering. 
and the altar shall be purified as it was purified with the bull. When you finish purifying it, you shall offer a bull from the herd without blemish and a ram from the flock without blemish. You shall present them before the Lord and the priests shall sprinkle salt on them and offer them up as a burnt offering to the Lord. For seven days, you shall provide daily a male goat for a sin offering. Also a bull from the herd and a ram from the flock without blemish shall be provided. Seven days shall they make atonement for the altar and cleanse it and so consecrate it. And when they've completed these days, then from the eighth day onward, the priests shall offer on the altar your burnt offerings and your peace offerings, and I will accept you, declares the Lord. Wow, that was a lot of details, but it's pretty cool to me that, that God would give him a vision of measuring the temple. So uh, it's just pretty cool. <laughs> Here's how long the wall should be and how deep and wide and uh, tall and everything. I mean, that's just pretty significant. To, uh, to me, I guess I'm not, I'm, I'm not really a detailed person, <laughs> but, but Ezekiel must have been that he could remember that or write that down or, um, or, or whatever it is. Um, so, but. I do have to apologize because yesterday I said today we were going to read the the part of Ezekiel that the water came out of the temple, which I love. <laughs> I don't know why, but I love that part. But that's not till chapter 47. So it looks like it's tomorrow. So I didn't mean to lie. Um, I just guess I got overexcited. <laughs> I guess I thought it was 43, but it's actually 47. So we'll get to read it tomorrow. So I uh, I didn't mean to falsely give you a teaser, <laughs> um, but I think I was just excited. Anyway, so tomorrow we will read that in chapter 47. <laughs> um, and today we'll thank God for his, how detailed, for how, how much detail he gives to his people. When he wants us to know detail, he gives us down to the, down to the hand breadth, down to the inch or the centimeter or the millimeter, whatever we need to know, he tells us every little detail because he cares because he loves us so receive the love of god today and thank him for his goodness and his all the details that he knows and loves and gives to us <laughs> thank you for joining me today it's always a pleasure reading with you and i look forward to reading with you again tomorrow i love you